I have always found Deep Trouble to be one of the more disappointing Goosebumps books. And that is mainly because the cover, you know, shows this really cool shark, and it kind of implies that the shark shouldn't be the main antagonist of the story. And while there is a shark in the story, and the scene where it is in there is really great, I mean, the shark's only in there for two chapters or so, and sort of the main supernatural character of that story, instead of it being, you know, the shark, it's a mermaid, and that doesn't even serve as the main antagonist, and the main antagonists really are humans. And so I always kind of found that a little disappointing because, you know, you have this underwater environment story from Deep Trouble, and, you know, they don't really take advantage of it and make the main antagonists humans, which I'm fine with for any other Goosebumps book, but Deep Trouble could have done so many other things, and that got me a little disappointed, but it's still a really great book. But anyway, guys, today I have a theory that will completely change how you think about Deep Trouble if it is proven correct. And that is that all the creatures and stuff like that that you see in the story are actually robots. And so, spoiler warning though, in this video for the 19th Goosebumps book in the original series, Deep Trouble. And so, other than that though, no other spoilers for any Goosebumps books. I may make references to some other Goosebumps books like Invasion of the Body Squeezer or The Legend of the Lost Legend. But I'm mainly just going to be spoiling deep trouble and when i say that i'm going to be talking about them i'm mainly saying like the body squeezers who are the main antagonists of invasion of the body squeezers are aliens or something like that so no huge spoilers for anything else other than deep trouble but anyway guys it's time for me to display the evidence of why i think all of the creatures in deep trouble are robots and so anyway in deep trouble our main character billy and his sister Sheena are spending their summer on a boat called the Cassandra, which is owned by their uncle, who is a scientist. And so, in the beginning of the story, um, they, the main protagonist, Billy Deep, goes out snorkeling in the middle of the ocean, and he sees a giant, dark, tentacle monster. And so, for a couple of pages, I believe, I haven't read the book, I've only read the book once, and that was years ago, so... Forgive me if my memory's a little rusty on the story, but basically, um, he thinks he sees a tentacle monster, and he tries to prove it, I think, for a couple of pages or so, but it doesn't really amount to anything until the end of the story. But anyway, so this zoo comes over, um, you know, to the boat that the main protagonist's uncle has, and they ask the uncle to find a mermaid, and they'll pay him a million dollars to find the mermaid. And the reason the zoo is offering to pay a million dollars for the mermaid is because recently there seems to be sightings of a mermaid all across the area that the main protagonist is at. And so, uh, you know, the main protagonist's uncle kind of discounts this and doesn't really think about it as far as I remember. Again, my memory's a little rusty on the story since I've only read it once. I probably should reread that one soon. Um, but anyway... Uh, then the main protagonist goes snorkeling again, and he's attacked by a hammerhead shark, and is nearly killed by it, until the mermaid comes along, uh, scares away the shark, I believe, and heals the wound using magical powers. Then, again, my memory's a little rusty on this, I've said that for like three times, but basically, then the mermaid gets kidnapped by the uncle, and is put in an aquarium. But then, the mermaid is stolen by the main protagonist's uncle's assistant, and so the assistant steals it, and so the rest of the story is really them trying to get back the mermaid, pretty much. And, you know, it's a pretty good story. Um, but one, one thing leads to another, the mermaid is put back into the ocean, and the uncle doesn't get the million dollars from the zoo, and... You know, that's pretty much how the story ends, but anyway, near the end of the book, or at the very end actually, uh, Billy Deep goes out snorkeling once again, and he sees a giant tentacle monster again. And that's sort of how the story ends. And overall, again I say, it's a pretty great book, just a little bit disappointing. But you might say though, how does this book point towards the creatures in the story being robots? And there's actually quite a lot of evidence you can see from the book that could point to this. 
And the first thing is that how all the creatures in the story are unidentified. And so when I say creatures, I'm talking about the hammerhead shark from the story, the giant tentacle monster, and the mermaid. And isn't it strange that all three of these creatures come up to the surface at once, and all of these creatures are unidentified species. And so, you can tell that because the mermaids all of a sudden coming up to the surface is directly implied from the story that, you know, there haven't been past mermaid signs. This thing seems to be very modern. Why else would the zoo now, at this current point in time, offer a reward to find the mermaid and all that stuff? So, there's that. And also, there is the giant tentacle monster which is definitely an identified species because even the scientist doesn't believe Billy. And how come both of them surface up at the same time? And then we get a new species of shark. You might think though that, you know, a hammerhead shark isn't a real species of shark. I'm not, it is a real species of shark. But if you take a look at the cover design that you see in the Tim Jacobus cover art, it looks directly different from any, um, you know, hammerhead shark because it is dark blue. No other hammerhead shark is that way. And also, if you take a look at its height or something like that, it is humongous compared to your average hammerhead shark. I haven't done that much research on hammerhead sharks and all that stuff, but from what I can tell, an average shark, I would say maybe 12 feet or so, and this hammerhead shark seems to be a whole lot bigger than that. Because if you see Billy Deep and you compare him to the hammerhead shark and so billy deep in this cover art is most likely five feet or so and since his head's poking up out of the water just judging from his body that we see in the cover art since the cover art, you know takes place in the water you see it from the water perspective and so all you see is basically his neck i would say to his legs and that would be maybe about four feet and you can tell just from looking at that hammerhead shark that is way bigger than the main protagonist and probably a lot bigger than 12 feet most likely and so that's also a huge factor to prove that that is a different species of hammerhead shark but you might say though that if you look at the reprint cover art made by brandon dorman that shark looks a whole lot more realistic and actually looks similar to a normal hammerhead shark but how are you supposed to know if that's the one that bit or attacked billy deep because if you look at the one made by Tim Jacobus, that one's almost guaranteed to be the one that attacked Billy Deep in the story. And that one has different colors, different size, and also it's incredibly rare for a hammerhead shark to bite a human, so new species is a whole lot more likely. And so, overall, I would say that there's a lot of evidence to prove that that is a completely different species of shark. And so that means that it's such a coincidence that there is three different species of, uh, you know, from the ocean coming up to the surface at the same exact time. And so I think that could mean that this can't be a coincidence. If you take a look at the story though, there's nothing wrong with the ocean. It seems completely normal. There's no, you know, science experiment or something like that, kind of like the last book in Deep Trouble 2. And it's, this one is completely different in that sense. There's nothing wrong or changed in the ocean at this point in time that could explain why three new species are coming up to the ocean at the same time. And I think this could mean that they're robots because, you know, they're more modern, which would explain why all the mermaid and stuff signings and all that are happening in very modern times, most likely because they are robots that were put in at very modern times. And not only is that coincidence thing that I was talking about the only piece of evidence, it's also the zoo thing. Why would the zoo want to pay a million dollars to find a mermaid that may or may not exist? I mean, why would they do that? It's not that credible for people all of a sudden to be sighting mermaids at this current point in time. Actually, that would probably not be enough evidence and actually deprove basically the thought that there are mermaids in the ocean because all of a sudden in modern times people are seeing mermaid and it's not like a local legend or anything that people are seeing mermaids this is directly modern times everyone's seeing it in modern times that would actually be a huge disproving factor 
for people to believe that there are mermaids in the ocean because if there were mermaids in this certain area people would probably be seeing it for a long period of time so why is this zoo seems to be so gullible into believing that this mermaid is real if only a bunch of people saw in modern times a mermaid and that's and they're willing to pay a million bucks for it i mean why would they waste their time with that you know what i mean it's just kind of weird how in that sense and also if you take a look at a bunch of other goosebumps monsters that get similar treatment most notably the abominable snowman of pasadena the zoo isn't offering to you know 100 million or not 100 million but a million dollars for people to come find it that is actually not the case entirely and so i see that as a huge piece of evidence to prove that they're robots because just think about it the zoo if it is robots would most likely want it later on i'm going to be trying to figure out who created the robots but the zoo could have either created robots or want to steal the robots so then, you know, they could operate at cheaper cost. They won't have to feed the animals or anything like that. But more detail on that later. But you can see that is another huge piece of evidence why they would want to pay a million dollars to find a mermaid that may or may not exist. And they don't do that for any other monster similar to the mermaid like the abominable snowman of Pasadena. Also, it's incredibly likely for this to happen. It's not like out of the blue, oh, there's robots in the ocean. Because if you take a look at Legend of the Lost Legend, there's this, you know, guy who's incredibly smart and lives in the woods, and he's able to create humans with person, not human robots with personality and all of that stuff, which is kind of weird considering, um, not kind of weird, but, you know, it is, that means it's incredibly likely for robot animals to be about in the Goosebumps universe and most notably be in deep trouble. Also, you get some evidence from the Goosebumps film because originally, instead of those plants that you see in the movie, it was originally supposed to be the sea, you know, the, uh, what's it called? The tentacle sea monster that you see in deep trouble. That was originally supposed to be the plants. So that, and also if you just take a look at the concept art, the tentacles and all that stuff are on land. All the plant scenes are on the land, and even in the concept art, they're on the land. So how is it possible for a sea creature to be destroying buildings and all that stuff if it's on land? It doesn't make any sense, because that's a sea creature, that means it needs to be in the ocean, and most likely the place that they the you know the place that the movie takes place in does not cr live close to the ocean and so there's no logical way how there is a giant you know tentacle sea monster firing his tentacles all throughout the school and destroying buildings and all that stuff if it can't even go on land and even if that could live on land for a long period of time it probably wouldn't have the strength to destroy buildings or even go through walls or anything like that no matter how strong it is in the ocean, since it's on land, it won't be half as powerful. And so I think that is a huge piece of evidence to say that all those creatures are robots. Because if that octopus is a robot, though, it could easily go on land and do the same exact thing. But now it is the time to wonder who would create these robots. And I don't think I've altogether proved it, but, you know, who would create robots, you would say. And I think it could be one of two things. And the first thing is the zoo. This, it would make sense for the zoo to make robots and st all that stuff, mainly because, you know, it, it would cut back on prices for their zoo thing. And also, not only would it cut back on prices... Uh, you know, it'd be a cheaper way of doing it, and everything like that. And so, I think, though, that maybe the creatures escaped from the zoo, maybe, maybe because they malfunctioned or something like that. So they escaped into the world, and then they wanted to, you know, recover them. And so they're offering a million dollars to find those animals. And that's why they're offering a million dollars to only a scientist. 
I mean, if they really wanted to find the animal and, you know, the mermaid and all that stuff and offer a million dollars, why don't they just publicly say to everyone that, you know, I'll give you a million dollars if you find the mermaid. And that, why would they only go to a trusted scientist unless they wanted to keep the whole thing a secret? Um, because they didn't want people to know that there were robots out in the ocean. But, while it does kind of make logical sense, uh, this seems to be disproven, though, with the fact that the mermaid in the Deep Trouble story has healing powers. Unless, you know, people in the Goosebumps universe have really high-tech um, things from zoos and all that stuff that can heal wounds, which I highly doubt. And since the mermaid and all that stuff was probably created just for entertainment and all that stuff, then I don't see why the mermaid would have healing powers at all. And so, it really doesn't make sense for the robot to have healing powers. You might even say that this proves, this pro disproves, I'm sorry, the whole entire fact of that they're, they're all robots. But, actually, there is, could be an explanation from this, and that is that they were created by aliens. It would explain why the zoo wants it, probably because it's alien technology, maybe they're even the government. Because, and they're just the zoo in disguise. And the reason they want that is for alien technology. It would explain why the zoo wants it for a million dollars, or the government may be undercover. And it also would explain how the robot has healing powers, because most of the aliens in the Goosebumps universe are super intelligent. The body squeezers have freeze rays, and... Even the people in Brain Juice, all the aliens in Brain Juice, are able to make a concoction that makes you smarter. Um, and so, I think that is a huge piece of evidence, and that would explain all the whole healing factor thing that the mermaid has. And also, there is more evidence than just that. Because in Goosebumps Horror Town... There, the sea monster, you know, the giant tentacle sea monster, is supposedly a body squeezer. And so you know the design of the giant tentacle monster. It's basically the Kraken, you could say. And then you take a look at the supposed sea monster that's in Goosebumps Horror Town. That is supposedly a body squeezer. The body squeezer, you know, is really different from a giant tentacle monster. And... Even if it is the giant sea monster that you see in the book, how is it even on land as well? It's completely different design, and plus, it's the same design as the body squeezer, which can't be a coincidence. So what I'm saying is maybe that one is addressed as the sea monster because it controls the sea monster as a robot. Because how else would this happen if the giant technical sea monster is a body squeezer. How could that be possible unless he sort of controls it, meaning that most likely all the creatures that you see in Deep Trouble are robots. But anyway, guys, comment down below what you think. Do you think that the mermaid, the shark, and the giant tentacle monster are robots, or do you think there's something completely different? But anyway, guys, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and that is the end of my video.